Welcome to Smart Syllabus, dear students. As you know, we are going through the crash course, which is for SSLC final exam preparation. So, for your SSLC final exam, in this series, we are going to discuss just a hundred percent question. It means these questions will be there in your final exam, hundred percent. So, out of the entire syllabus, there are few questions, students, which are going to appear at any cost in your final examination. Only the change will be the values. So if here we prove root 3 as irrational number, in your exam it may come root 5 as an irrational number. So only that is the change. Apart from that, remaining all steps and everything is exactly same. So we are dealing with the crash course of SSLC final exam. So if you have not seen still those videos, the link is in the description. We can go there and check those videos. And at the end of the every video students there is some homework by practicing that homework definitely you can make this 100 percent question yours so without pay do the homework and to know more 100 percent questions from this series you have to subscribe the channel press the bell icon from the bell icon you have to select all option so that you can get the notification of every video whenever it is uploaded okay today we learn one more 100 percent question Okay, let's begin now. So dear students, as you know, we are in SSLC final exam preparation crash course series and the topic we are dealing with is real numbers so under this real number as you already know there will be four mark question that will be in the form of one plus one plus two marks it means two one mark questions and two mark question one at 100 percent level okay for this there are a few points already we have discussed in the previous video one is expressing the given number as its prime factor finding the lcf and lcm calculating hcf using the eda that is euclid's division algorithm as well as we studied the statement of euclid's division algorithm now we are in this part that is proving the given number as an irrational number okay let's continue now so dear students as we know under the category proving the given number as an irrational number so there are two types of sums one is a binomial sum in the sense in which two terms are given for you to prove that this is an irrational number and the one more type of sum is a monomial just a single term so even they may be asked in the exam out of the binomial or a monomial one question is 100 percent sure in your final examination dear students so you have to know the sums you have to practice the sums at any cost so in the previous video we learned how to prove these sums but today in this video will focus on the monomial terms and how to prove them as irrational number okay moving to the next part students sslc final exam preparation crash course under that real number topic this is the first sum proof this one as an irrational number okay proof that root 3 is an irrational number first the solution part even in the binomial type of sums students as you understood only in the previous video the first step was assumption so let us assume the given number is an rational number once you go on considering the given number as a rational number by writing few steps at the end you will come to know that no it's not rational it's irrational okay first step let root 3 is a rational number so already in the previous video we studied the students the rational numbers are in the form of p e by q therefore root 3 is equal to p e by q where p and q belongs to set that is set of integers q is not equal to 0 this much usually we used to consider when it's a binomial now it's a monomial one more term we have to take here p comma q is equal to 1 that means p and q have a common factor only 1 means p and q are co primes co primes in the sense their common factor is only 1 it means they are the 
prime numbers so like that we can consider so at the end this one assumption only is going to win the trophy just check how it is possible now okay next step uh, what we have is root 3 is equal to p by q now cross multiply this q so what we get root 3 q is equal to p next squaring both the sides so both the sides we have to square root 3 q the square is equal to p square squaring both the sides so here in this part students the point where you have to concentrate is the square is for root 3 separately as well as the square is separately for q okay first root 3 square when you square a root term something like this root 3 square the square and the root term gets cancelled just 3 remains so 3 now q square is nothing but q square that's equal to p square is p square further we cannot solve anything call it as fun now just imagine students if q square equal to if you write the equation then 3 comes in the denominator it means q square equal to p square by 3 it means what p square by 3 in the sense 3 divides p square isn't it so we write that only now 3 divides p square uh, dear students in your maths textbook page number 157 theorem number 8.3 there is a simple theorem huh, no need to prepare for the theorem just you need to know the point or you can say the output of the theorem the theorem says that if a number divides a square of certain number then the same number divides the other number without a square it means if 3 divides p square then even 3 divides p this is theorem 8.3 in your real number section okay once 3 divides p square it means 3 divides p we can consider p is equal to 3m because we can take from this m is equal to p upon 3 because 3 is dividing the p that's we can call it as p is equal to 3m now put this p is equal to 3m in equation 1 see so easy it is just concentrated bit so put p is equal to 3m in equation 1 check what is the equation here it is so we can write 3q square that's equal to p is 3m now 3m the square now 3q square is equal to 3 square is 9 m square you can divide 3 and 9 here if we cross multiply 3 what we get if ones are 3 3 sir it means it is q square equal to 3 m square that implies just cross multiply the 3 so we get m square equal to q square by 3 so one point you need to concentrate students this is q square upon 3 now come here if you cross multiply 3 we get p square upon 3 p square upon 3 in the sense 3 divides p square 3 divides p similarly here once we get q square upon 3 it means 3 divides q square that means 3 divides even q isn't it now write the steps now that means 3 divides q square that means 3 divides q this is theorem 8.3 if a number divides square of that one even without square also the number can divide that one so this is 3 divides q now once 3 is dividing p as well as 3 is dividing q it means p and q are both divisible by 3 it means p and q have a common factor that's 3 in this case now so they have a common factor but it's a biggest mistake now what is that earlier we considered p and q have only common factor that is 1 now we are getting p and q are also having a common factor other than 1 that is 3 we considered common factor is 1 now we are getting common factor is 3 so some way the things are not matching isn't it here common factor is 1 here common factor is 3 in the same terms they have p and q p and q common factor 1 common factor 3 so same numbers are having two different common factor it means this is contradiction because we considered they are co primes but here we came to know they are not co primes so this is contradiction 
why this contradiction arises, student? Yes, because we assumed root three is a rational number. It means our assumption is wrong. Once our assumption is wrong, what is that? Root three is a rational number. If this is wrong, then definitely root three is a irrational number. See, so easy it is. Just you need to put these certain steps in that so that you can understand it very easily. Write down the sum. Practice again and again these yellow steps. Once you come to know, you you'll get two marks, hundred percent in your final examination. Okay, one more sum we'll take to understand. Still in a better way, student. Now prove that root five is an irrational number. For that first solution, under the solution first we have to. Assume, assume that let root five is a rational number. Once it is rational number, we can write it. Root five is equal to p by q, where p and q belongs to z, and q is not equal to zero. And very important, p and q have common factor only one. That is, p and q are co primes. So this one statement is going to Help us to solve the entire sum. Okay, now just cross multiply this q here, so we get root five q that's equal to p. Now squaring both the sides. Remember the steps. Squaring both the sides, so we get root five q the square that's equal to p square. Okay, root five squaring in the sense root ten square gets cancelled, so we just get five. Q square as Q square as it is. This is P square. Call it as one. It means what, student? Just if you write here, Q square is equal to P square cross multiply five. So we get five. It means five is dividing P square. So that implies five divides P square. And according to the theorem. Five even divides not only square; it's term without square. So five divides p square. Five divides p. Once five is dividing p, we can take off p is equal to five m. Because if we cross multiply five, we get again p upon five means five is dividing p. Now put this p is equal to five m in equation one, which we have here. So that is. Five q square, that's equal to p square. But here p this time it is five m. So five q square is equal to this is p square. So five square is twenty five m square is m square. We can divide five and twenty five. Five ones are five fives are. So we get q square is equal to five m square. That implies. M square equal to cross multiply five, so we get Q square by five. Q square by five, it is nothing but similar to P square by five. Once P square by five, it means five is dividing P square, five divides P. Similarly, Q square by five in the sense five divides Q square. That means five divides Q. So this implies five divides Q. Again. So we got five is also dividing p as well as q. It means other than one, they have a common factor. Then in the sense, p and q have a common factor. Earlier we started with the statement that p and q have only common factor is one. But now we are getting other than one. Even their common factor is five. It means they are not co primes. So it means this is the contradiction. Means we considered something, but we got something. Therefore, this is contradiction. Why this contradiction arised? Again, it's because of our statement. What is that? Let us assume root five is a rational number. So this is wrong now. So our assumption is wrong. Once our assumption is wrong, in the sense root five is irrational number. Clear? So this is. A very important sum, students. So we have solved two important examples of a 
monomial so like this similar examples are there at the end of this video for you as homework you can practice those sums and you can solve those sums now there is one more type of sum of proving in the similar manner so that is also a monomial but with a coefficient so let's check how to solve that sum now so students the one more sum that's proved that 2 root 5 is an irrational number you can see the difference here every time till now we solved root 3 sum root 5 sum but this is something different 2 root 5 here is an coefficient and once there is coefficient this type of sums are easier than this type of monomial so let's check how this is easy now okay solution part so again the beginning step at least is the same that's our assumption so our assumption is let 2 root 5 is a rational number once it is rational number we can write 2 root 5 is equal to p by q where p and q belongs to z q is not equal to 0 now for that we used to write p and q are co-primes but when there is a coefficient that part is not required so moving next now cross multiply these two so what we get root 5 is equal to p by 2 into q it's 2 q we just compare these two parts now this part and this part this is in the form p by q it means this is a rational number therefore p by 2 q is a rational number but we know root 5 is a irrational number but root 5 is a irrational number so again it is just like the binomial so this is rational number this is irrational number and between them equal sign so something is not matching a rational number being equal to irrational number it means this is called contradiction so this is contradiction and uh, why this contradiction arised because we have considered the given number as an rational number it means our assumption is wrong once our assumption is wrong it means the assumption is 2 root 5 is rational number if this is wrong then what is correct definitely 2 root 5 is irrational number this is more easier than a monomial which is not having the coefficient students so practice all these three types of sums again and again now it's homework time so dear students now the homework time so as you can see here again five sums are the for your homework so it's a monomial root six root two, two root seven so you have a coefficient you have to solve this one by the last method so this is also monomial so even this is a monomial but with a coefficient and you know now how to solve this one so binomial solving and like this monomial solving steps are same so students without will practice the homework and get yourself ready for the final examination so in the next video, we'll meet again with one more 100% question. Don't forget to subscribe the channel. If you have seen the complete video, then don't forget to press the like button as well as the bell icon. Okay, again, we'll meet with one more 100% question in the next video. Till then, study well, study hard.